My name is Azeem Beg and you are watching Kitchen with Azeem. Please subscribe to my channel it is free and press the bell too with all options selected. Today we are making sars and kar sag. Now let us start the recipe. The most time consuming part of this recipe may be washing and chopping the greens but by following a few steps the task will be efficient. First take the bunches of spinach and mustard greens one at a time and lay on a cutting board. Chop off 1 to 2 inches of stem to remove any tough parts and make the greens more uniform in size. Submerge the loose leaves in a bowl of cold water and briefly swish them around to help remove any dirt. Remove the bunch from the bowl, dump the water, along with the dirt particles, and repeat the process until the water is clean. This can range from 2 rinsings to as many as 4, depending on how dirty the bunches are, to begin with. Sometimes vegetables from farm stands are sold with a bit of the soil. Since in this recipe you are cooking the greens in water you don't need to dry them before chopping. To cut the spinach and mustard greens into fine pieces gather the bunch, or a portion if too large, with one hand, lay on the cutting board, and, with the other hand, chop into small pieces using a sharp knife. After wash and chop the greens and then add them to the cooking pot or in pressure cooker. In a lager cooking pot put sarsoon kar sag and add 4 cups of water, in low to medium heat cook it for 2 hours. If you want to cook it in a pressure cooker then use the way of cooking below. Then add the chopped garlic, ginger and green chilies. And also add red pepper powder, turmeric and salt as per taste. In a pressure cooker, instant pot cook on high pressure for 5 minutes and then let the pressure release naturally. Alternatively, you can also cook everything on a stove top for 20 to 25 minutes until soft. This slow cooker sag recipe is incredible. It's so rich buttery and delicious that you'll forget you're eating vegetables. Seriously, it's that good. This recipe is the real deal. It's how this popular Indian dish should be made. This isn't just any sag, it's sarsan kar sag. Sarsan kar sag is common in Pakistan as well as northern India. It is a sabzi, which means it incorporates leafy parts of vegetables and herbs. A little background on this dish, sag just means pureed greens, so when you order this dish in a restaurant chances are that it's slightly different at each place. Many make palak sag, which is sag made with spinach. My favorite sag is authentic Punjabi sag or sarsan kar sag, which translates to, sag made with mustard greens. This Punjabi sag is typically made with mustard greens, some spinach and lots of ghee. There's no negotiating on the ghee. It's essential. Blend to a coarse paste. You may blend it to super fine texture using a high speed blender. I prefer a little coarse. Set heat to low and let the sag simmer for 20 to 25 minutes on low heat. It will thicken as it simmers. Sarsan kar sag is spicy mustard greens is a winter staple in Punjab, Pakistan. It's usually served with maki roti, a flatbread made with maize flour, a dollop of butter and makes a nutritious meal. In Pakistan, during winters there are a lot of seasonal dishes like gajar halwa, meti paratha, peanut chikki and this sarsan kar sag. Since mustard greens are slightly bitter on their own, this sag is usually cooked with other greens to balance the bitterness. Greens like spinach, bathwa, meti etc. are commonly used. I usually use 4 to 1 ratio of mustard greens to other greens. So for this recipe I used 4 kg greens, out of which it was 3.5 kg mustard greens and the remaining 500 grams were a mix of all other greens, spinach and bathwa. Here I use bathwa and if you use spinach, turnip and collard greens along with mustard greens. It worked really well for this recipe. Of course, if you find bathwa and meti, feel free to use them along with spinach. If you don't find anything, just mustard greens and spinach would also work. Turka is very important part in this recipe, so we must do it perfectly. Sometimes use hing in turka. For the final tadka, heat a small pan on medium heat. Once the pan is hot add ghee to it and then add hing and sliced or chopped garlic cloves. Saute for few seconds and then add the chopped green chili and chopped ginger in it. Once the greens are cleaned, they are pressure cooked along with onion, tomato, garlic, ginger, green chilies and radish until really soft. Once cooked through, you puree the greens. Some people prefer really smooth sag while others like it to be little coarse. If you want it completely smooth, use a high speed blender. You can use immersion blender and it works just fine. The final tadka at the end is crucial. 
I usually use garlic, hing, chopped green chilies and ginger in my tadka. You can add ingredients as per your taste. And yes, you have to use ghee for the tempering. I cannot imagine eating sag without ghee. Sarsankar sag tastes even better the next day, at least that's what I think. In all of Pakistan, especially Punjab you would find sarsankar sag served with maki ki roti and fresh white butter. Maki ki roti is a flatbread made with maize flour, it's little tricky to make especially if you are not mixing in any wheat flour. It's smeared with ghee and enjoyed with the sag, it's a classic match and in my opinion, should always be eaten together. You can of course eat sag with roti, naan or rice too. Method. Wash and chop the greens and then add them to the pressure cooker. Then add the chopped onion, garlic, ginger and green chilies. Then add the 3 tablespoons of red chili powder and 1 tablespoon salt. Add 5 cups water and stir. Cook everything on a stovetop for 20 to 25 minutes until soft. I suggest you this is the best option. Open the pot and then use an immersion blender to puree the sag. If you don't have an immersion blender, wait for it cool down a bit and then puree using your regular blender. Blend to a coarse paste. You may blend it to super fine texture using a high speed blender. I prefer a little coarse. Transfer sag to another pot on stove top over medium low heat. Add half cup of maize flour to the sag and mix, this helps in thickening the sag. And don't forget first dissolve maize flour in water first before adding in sag. Set heat to low and let the sag simmer for 20 to 25 minutes on low heat. It will thicken as it simmers. For the final tadka, heat a small pan on medium heat. Once the pan is hot add ghee to it and then add hing and chopped garlic cloves. Saute for few seconds and then add the chopped onion and dried red chilies. Cook until the ginger and garlic turn light golden brown. Transfer the tadka, tempering to the sag and mix. Serve sarsen kar sag with maki roti, or naan. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the recipe.